Aloha guys. So I want to make a little video on DJI Refresh because a lot of people aren't familiar with DJI Refresh and I want to tell you why it is so great. So when you buy a drone, you have the option of getting refresh on it. What that means is you get coverage on your drone if you have an incident or a crash or it goes in the water or it flies away on you, whatever it may be, for the most part, it is covered. So you essentially get peace of mind when you're flying your drone, which is really great, especially when you have a more expensive drone like a Mavic 3 or Mavic 3 Cine or an Inspire 2 or whatever it may be. The bottom line, even a Mini 2, I would buy it on anything. Because if you do have an incident, as I said, you have peace of mind, you basically pay a replacement fee and you ship the one in and they'll ship you either a new one out or they'll repair the one based on which one is going to cost you less. So, for example, I had a Mini 2 that had an issue. One of the arms was bent and just had a crash. So what I did is you go online to DJI, you go to repair or support. You can just Google DJI repair, or submit request, whatever it may be but you submit a repair request, you type in the model number, you put in the model number, usually there's like a drop down menu. And for this example, I'd pick my Mini 2. You would basically tell a little brief description of what happened, if it was a crash, if you transmission error, you had water damage, whatever it may be. You write a little description, as I said. You basically can say if you want a data analysis done or if it was just user error, pilot error. If it was pilot error, you're gonna skip that whole data analysis part of it, which will expedite things too. For example, like my Mavic 3 Cine, I requested a data analysis because I had issues with that. And that's the panicked part of that. Like when I had my Cine incident in the city, I couldn't find the drone. But when I actually had the drone recovered, the building engineer found it. It gave me peace of mind because I knew I had the physical drone to send back in the DJI and ended up being a great thing because I got refunded my $6,000. So having that physical drone is a huge part of it. They do make exceptions on occasion if you can't find the drone or if it goes into the water, for example. But for the most part, you want to physically recover the drone. It's going to weigh out in your favor like I did when I dove for someone's spark when it went into the water or Mavic Air, I forgot which one it was, but having the physical drone just makes the whole process so much more streamlined and easy. So after you fill out that little area of the crash report info, it's gonna give you your personal info to fill in. You're gonna put your shipping and your billing and all that kind of stuff. You're gonna hit submit and it will generate an email and you put your drone into a box and you go to the UPS store or whatever and you can do the little scan code. They'll scan it and it'll get shipped. Also, when you're doing all of this, there's something called the express replacement. And what that does, I believe you pay your, I've only used it once, so I don't know a ton about it, but I believe you pay the replacement fee ahead of time. And the minute DJI gets your drone, they, without any kind of data analysis or looking at it, they just ship out a brand new one. So we'll expedite the process a little bit more and you'll get your drone or a drone back into you as quickly as possible. So I don't know if you have to pay a little bit more for that, but at the same time, there is that option. You can look into it when you are hopefully not having an incident, but eventually everyone does have one. And once they get the drone, they'll check it in and you'll get an email to kind of get you through the entire process. Once it gets checked in, then they have some technician look at it. And then once that happens, they'll give you an estimate. And then once you get the estimate, you can approve the estimate. And then after that, you pay for the estimate based on what you want. Do you want to pay the repair cost or do you want to pay the refresh? You're usually going to end up paying the refresh because it ends up costing you less money. And maybe you want to pay for it to be repaired if you're really wanting to have one more refresh, one more life essentially on that particular drone model that you have. But for the most part, refresh is gonna be the most cost-effective way. And a lot of times they'll end up just replacing it. Like my Mini 2, for example, they just sent out a brand new one, just the body only, and this is what it came in. So that's that. So pretty simple, and that's really it. But I would definitely opt to get refresh when you do purchase your drone or your Osmo or whatever it may be. You have the ability to buy one year or two years. I would personally buy two years. And if you do buy one year, then they have something called Refresh Plus, which will allow you to refresh it, essentially buy it for another year. So extend the refresh one more year. The max you can get is two years out of refresh. And really that's it. So they'll send you an email. You have to get the refresh before it expires but just know two years is the max for DJI Refresh, and I can't recommend it more because it really is 
a saving grace for when you're flying drones. And when you have refresh, it allows you to fly just that much more safely, that much more comfortably and confidently. You don't have to be so worried that you may crash, because if you do crash, you're gonna still try not to, but if you do, you at least know that you have kind of an ace in the hole and you can pay the refresh and get something else, meaning a new drone and get a replacement sent to you and it's not gonna be the end of the world. You basically kinda do know you have a get out of jail free card for the most part. So refresh for the win. I hope this clarifies some stuff on DJI Refresh. Subscribe if you haven't, hit the thumbs up. It will help this channel grow. Hopefully we'll get the 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year, that would be a nice moderate goal without being too much. Ideally next year I break 10,000, that's my goal. So anyway, help me get to that goal and aloha.